Hi everyone, I'm Garrett Weinzerl for the Arrowhead Center at NMSU, and I'm back with tips on how to look a little more professional when working remotely. Now let's go ahead and start this video off with a good old fashioned hashtag not sponsored, because I'm going to be mentioning multiple specific VoIP applications today, and not one of them is sponsoring this video. These are just applications I have a lot of experience with. My goal today isn't to tell you which app to use, but to help guide you towards the app that could work for your needs. So let's get into it. Online conferencing tools. There's seemingly endless options out there, which means we're already at tip number one. Pick where to meet. You need to meet somewhere, but which conferencing software is best for you? The real answer is, it depends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Wait, 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 where, where, where are you going? Okay, all, all right, all right. Let, let's talk about some of my favorites. All of these, by the way, have free options. Skype's basically been around since the dawn of VoIP. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. Sure, you can pay a little extra to call or text actual phone numbers, but you can have a group call completely for free. I like Skype because it's been around for so long that there's a good chance anyone I'm trying to get in contact with already has a Skype account or at least a passing knowledge of how it works. Want to stay in the free zone but add chat and voice room functionality? Discord may look like it's aimed at gamers, and that's because it is. But it also has most of the same offerings as Skype with the addition of some robust chat and voice room features. Personally, my podcast teams and I have been utilizing Discord more and more, and not just for our community, but for running the business side of things as well. We're conducting most of our meetings in the same place that we hang out with our community. The only real downside with Discord that I see is that gamer branding. A lot of other professionals are either completely unaware of Discord or don't already have an account. It's one of the newer options and not nearly as many users have experience with it. And while I could spend all day just rattling off all of the possible options out there, we'd be here too long and I have my own meeting to catch. But there's no way I could talk about the big players in the online conferencing world without mentioning Zoom. I find in my circles that Zoom is thought of as a paid service. And while it is true that there are many different levels of paid subscriptions, Zoom has a free option. It limits things like how long you can conduct a group meeting, a maximum time of 40 minutes to be exact. But if you weren't planning on having a meeting for more than 40 minutes anyway, that time limit isn't really a hindrance. I think A, if not the reason Zoom is seeing such success in this increasingly remote world we find ourselves in, is because team members don't need to have a Zoom account to join in on a Zoom meeting. The meeting host can create a direct link that will automatically bring members into the meeting. I love this feature. If I'm hosting a meeting, I'm already herding cats. At least now I don't have to add teach cats how to sign up for Zoom to my job title. There's a lot of other reasons I like Zoom and Skype and Discord as well. I'll talk about those more as we go on. So let's move on to tip number two, share your contact information. This is the number one thing I end up waiting for before the start of a call with a new team member. We just never seem to remember to share our online contact information before attempting to meet. Most conferencing software isn't going to let you call someone without their contact information. Email, account names, or meeting links. For Skype, other users can search for you using the email address you use to create your Skype account. If you're like me and have been using Skype for over a decade, you may also have a Skype name that you can share with others. Think of it as a badge of Skype honor. That's right, I used Skype before it was cool. But nowadays, email addresses are the most common way to add other users to your Skype contacts. This is true for Zoom as well. Now, I already mentioned that my favorite thing about Zoom is that I can just send a meeting link to my team members even if they don't have a Zoom account. But you can still add frequent contacts to your Zoom account, and I would recommend that you do. It just makes things easier. It's the same as Skype. Just go to your contacts, click the plus icon, and enter the email address of the team member you're looking to add. The outlier of apps I've already mentioned is Discord. You will need both your contacts username and number, complete with the number or pound sign before the actual numerals. Also, Discord usernames are case sensitive. Do us all a favor and keep that in mind while you're creating your Discord username. I'm looking at you, I rock noobs 2739. Oh, I forgot the hash. You know what? I will do this later. Tip number three, know your tools. Need to share files? What about sharing your screen? Will an audio call work or do you need video? How do you even turn on video? Most of these features are available in all of the apps I've mentioned, as well as similar competitors that I haven't. 
But the way you go about turning on video or sharing a file differs from one application to the next. You want to familiarize yourself with the features of your conferencing app. Get in there ahead of time. Start clicking around. Call that one friend who was always down to help you test out new tech. I'm looking at you, Ben. You're a lifesaver. Am I allowed to give tips within a tips video? Oh, it's, it's my show. I'm, I'm allowed to do what I want. Cool. Here's how to start a call in all of the apps I've mentioned. For Skype, go to your contacts. Click on the contact you want to call. If you've enabled split window view, a new window for that contact will pop up. Click the phone icon for an audio call or the camera icon for a video call. Now, there's a couple ways to do this in Zoom. If you want to just start a meeting and send out a link so others can join, I like to just click the orange New Meeting button on the home screen. Hover over the meeting windows that just popped up and click on Manage Participants. In the new Participant tab that just opened up, click on Invite in the lower left of that same tab. From this window, you can invite directly from your Zoom contacts. Use the Email tab to email out invitations or simply copy the URL to send out anywhere you would like. You can do this in chat, email, anywhere that basically supports text. Alternatively, you can start a one-on-one -on -one meeting directly from the contacts tab. Just click on the contact you wish to meet and click meet. Now, Discord is the most different here because you can call one or multiple contacts much the same way you can in Zoom or Skype. But if you have or are in a Discord channel, you can also just pop into a voice channel. For calls, go to the friends tab. This is accessed by clicking on the Discord icon in the top left. Find the contact you wish to call, right click and click call. You can also call using the phone or camera icons from any Discord direct message. Want to start a group chat or call? Click the plus icon next to direct messages and check the names of up to nine contacts. That's right, up to nine. You can have a 10 person call in Discord. If you're in a Discord channel and want to enter a voice room, simply click on the voice room you wish to enter. It is that simple. This brings us to today's fourth and final tip. Have some fun. Conferencing doesn't have to be all business. And since it's pretty difficult to bring donuts to a virtual meeting, let's look at other ways to lighten the mood. Virtual backgrounds, camera filters, or even a good old fashioned wardrobe change. Miss Casual Fridays? They don't have to end just because you're working from home. And why not give Onesie Wednesdays a try while you're at it? Beyond that, meeting over voice can be used for team building exercises. Why not start up an office board game night or a video game league? A 2019 study by BYU found that newly formed work teams experience a 20% increase in productivity on subsequent tasks after playing video games together for just 45 minutes. Co-author of the study and BYU associate professor Greg Anderson said, quote, To see that big of a jump, especially for the amount of time played, was a little shocking. Companies are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on team building activities. And I'm thinking, go buy an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Switch or beef up your PC. Hashtag not sponsored. Also, consider meeting up in an in-game space. Quest together in World of Warcraft or visit each other's islands in Animal Crossing. Tabletop games are great too. No one ever said they had to be played on the same tabletop. Dice games can be played as long as everyone has dice. And there are few experiences that will bring a team closer together than slaying actual dragons in Dungeons and Dragons. Let me know how it goes in the comments, especially if you hit any bumps as usual. I love answering questions. And please like and subscribe for more videos like these and to keep up to date with how the Arrowhead Center is helping clients build their businesses. See you next time. This video was brought to you by the New Mexico Economic Development Department, Office of Science and Technology.